All right, guys, I'm going to go over some things with you guys um, in this video just to help you understand a little bit of things you can do in your final project. So I'm putting this worksheet um, on Canvas for you guys, but it just shows different things. It's hard to see this to get closer. Um, it just shows different ways to make exterior backgrounds look good. Um, it, like if you're doing a landscape, obviously a city is going to be a, bit, a little bit different. But we obviously don't want objects that are floating. We want to anchor them and ground them with a horizon line. If you adjust your horizon line up, so if you put your horizon line up high before creating, you're going to have to think about things that are probably a little bit closer to the viewer. Um, you might see some things further away if your horizon line is lower, um, because that's just how far you can see. You have all this room to work with um, as a distance, whereas things are gonna be a little bit closer. So you have to think about um, the depth, the field of depth that it creates when you put your horizon line in different places. Um, cropping and overlapping. This is really important in what we're doing. Uh, we want things to overlap. We want to show that things are further away, that they're hi that they're hiding behind other things because this is closer and that's farther away. We also want to look like we're taking a like a snapshot. We don't want to look like we've centered everything where we can see everything beautiful. Cropping means we see parts of objects and not whole objects. We have size and vertical placement, so. Vertical placement for size means if it's, if it's closer to the bottom of the paper, it's going to appear closer to the viewer. If it's further up the paper, so like this tree is way up here and this tree is way down here, this is going to appear further away from the viewer. Okay, so the further up the paper something goes, the further away from the viewer it is. And the further down the paper something goes, the closer to the viewer it is. Things get smaller the farther away they go. So we have to draw tiny things for them to appear further away. And we have to draw bigger things for them to appear closer. One point perspective is what we're using on this project. So you want to have one point perspective. You want to say everything's going back to that point. Then it helps us to show that things are farther away and that they're getting smaller and it shows depth and it shows distance. Um, more horizontals equal more space. So if you see, we've made a horizontal line, a horizontal line, a horizontal line to show different hills. That makes it look like this one point perspective road is kind of rolling up and down the hills. It creates the illusion of more space without us having to do much more work, okay? Um, diagonals suggest movement or direction. So the fact that Look, this water goes diagonal around. So because we made this a diagonal river or lake, and this side is diagonal too, this shows us that it's it goes off this way. It gives us some movement. It also shows us direction. We can see that because they've curved this little part of the mountain here, it actually goes around. I hope y'all actually saw this one. This one goes around the um, little mountain. The lake is going around the mountain. Um, try and incorporate a foreground, middle ground, and background to create more space and depth. So our foreground is at the front. F, foreground, F, front. The front of our picture is going to be our foreground. So our foreground is going to be the stuff that we see really um, up close. Okay, like if we're looking here, this rock, this tree, these are our foreground. Um, midground is the middle of the, the paper. So a midground is kind of these little these little houses right here. We've got a foreground right here. We've got a midground right here. And background is the things that we see really far away. So like these mountains, the clouds, that is the background. And if you have a foreground, a midground, and a background, and you're not just drawing everything in one area, it's going to really make your space look like um, it has a lot of depth. Okay? And these are some different combinations that they've done with one point perspective. So they did like a little balloon floating away with um, 
some trees. They've done some buildings kind of in the mountains. This is like a farm road at night. Um, and this is like a, I don't know, it's going past a, like a food plant or something out in the, it's like a, it's not a paved road, it's like a rocky road. Okay, all of these things, these are gonna help you be more successful with your uh, final project. Now, let's look at this Landscapes 101. If you are choosing to draw something uh, that's outside, you have different ideas here on how to draw grass, rocks, clouds, mountains, trees, and it has the, you know, the no-no no sun, the no-no no clouds, and the no-no trees. So um, use these to help you, and then you can end up with, where's my paper? And I'll show you these again as just kind of ideas. You will end up with something similar. I've got to pull this back up. Something similar to this. Okay, something similar to this. This is just a road. I put like a little park on one side. Um, I had a flower shop. I have a little Mexican food restaurant. I have a pharmacy. I don't know what that is, but it has a little mural on it. Um, I cut these to the side to create that space that idea that there's roads going that way. Um, there's like a little road sign. I have clouds, I have sun, I have trees. Um, I've combined buildings and nature. You don't have to do buildings and nature. You can do all buildings. You could have um, the, you could have a, a pond right here with Cthulhu coming out of it and his tentacles uh, grabbing people off the street if you want. It's up to you. <laughs> you have lots of options. And then uh, where's my other one that I have done? One point. Those are options. Hold on a second. Here we go. And then, like, this one is the farm at night that I did. It's all an outdoor scene. But using those rules of perspective, you're able to create your own creative idea. Okay? Um, something I do want to talk to you guys about is quality. Um, lately online, we have seen a lot of non-quality pictures. And you guys, if you're virtual, there is no reason for you to not turn in quality work uh, that we're asking our in-person students to turn in. This is quality, okay? This is like 100. This is what 100 would be. If you turned in something like this, okay, um, it's not as detailed, it doesn't have as much value in it, um, the perspective might be a little off, the coloring's a little bit splotchy. This might be like a 90, and you can see a difference. You can see that I've added a lot of color value, I've really taken my time, I've thought about everything, I've added a lot of detail. Here, it's starting to get a little bit more blah, it's starting to get a little bit more messy. This might be like a 90. Um, we're looking here. The coloring has not been blended together. Uh, you can use a white colored pencil to do that, by the way. I, all I did here was I went, oh, all I did here was I went over all my colors and color blending with a white colored pencil as hard as I could push and it created that really nice smooth color. Um, this, there's not a lot of variety, like my trees are all exactly the same. My perspective is starting to definitely not be right. Um, there, things aren't looking completely right. I left a line here that I didn't erase. Um, if you see my sidewalk, it's not correct. I wasn't really using my ruler. I think I was more trying to, um, just do it by sight and not use my ruler, and that shows, that's different. This would probably be something like a 75. Um, this is more like a C, whereas like, this is like a 90 to a 100, this is like an 80 to a 90. You're in here getting like a, a 70 something at this level. And then, this would be a failing project. 
okay, I haven't blended colors. I've colored really badly. I haven't really tried to do perspective. I just kind of went through the motions and said, oh, um, yeah, this is the project that you want me to do. I didn't even like erase my, my um, drawing before I went in with Sharpie. And I am going to go through the steps of this with you guys, but I just want to show you that it really does matter um, how much effort and how much time you put into this, especially with this project, because in this project, it's really awesome. You don't have to have a lot of artistic skill to be good at this project. You just have to be able to understand when things go back to a vanishing point and when they're parallel. So um, let's look at side by side. You have a 100 with an F. This is what they're going to look like, okay? I believe that everybody in, can do something along this lines if they try hard enough. I don't want to see anything like this. And I'm sure Mr. Mills doesn't want to see anything like this either, okay? So um, that's all for kind of just going over quality and just some general ideas on how to lay out your design.